All right, let's talk about one-to-one -one functions, kind of what they are, uh, what they're going to look like, uh, what's not going to be a one-to-one -one function, which is probably in some ways more important. Okay, one-to-one -one functions. A function is one-to-one -one if each x maps to only one y and each y corresponds to only one x. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about this. You guys remember what it takes to be a function, all right? S uh, a relation is going to be a function if each x maps to only one y. Well, now we're going to add one to one, which says each y corresponds to only one x, okay? And so this is the new part for us. All right, but you guys, we know what this means in English, one-to-one. -one. If something is in a one-to-one -one correspondence, what do we say? Well, we're in a one-to-one -one correspondence. Like if, if in Tukey, I, uh, I lined uh, the girls up and the guys up on the other side, and I said we're in a one-to-one -one correspondence, what does that mean? Well, that means for each girl, there's one guy, and, and for each guy, there's one girl. It's a one-to-one -one mapping, and that's what we're looking for in one-to-one -one functions. Okay, and so we see here with this picture, it's a one-to-one -one mapping. All right, each x maps to one y. Okay, all right, so here's an example of something that's not one-to-one. -one. Why is it not one-to-one? -one? Because we have two x's both 2 and 3, which map to 7. Okay, so again, this is not going to be a one-to-one -one function because the y is repeating. All right, a one-to-one -one function. A function f is going to be one-to-one -one if for elements a and b in the domain, all right, if f of a equals f of b implies a equals b. Now this is... Um, straight up math textbook definition if you can't tell. All right, so let's try to put a little English to it. All right, what this is saying is that if two y values are equal, all right, then if the function's one to one, the x values have to be equal, okay? Why? Because we're in a one to one relationship. All right, so again, if two y values are equal, then one to one says, hey, those x values have to be equal also. All right, so let's go through how you are going to figure out whether or not a function is one-to-one. -one. All right, so here we have f of x equals negative 3x plus 5. Is the function one-to-one? -one? All right, so we must show that if two y's are equal, then we're going to get that the x's are equal. All right, so how do we kind of follow this recipe? All right, this boils down to plugging in a and b for x. All right, so f of a would just be negative 3a plus 5. f of b would plug b in, so we'd get negative 3b plus 5. Okay, so again, just substituting in a and b. And now let's try to simplify. I can subtract the 5s, and they quote-unquote cancel. I could divide both sides by negative 3, and voila, what do I get? I get a equals b. So if I start out assuming that f of a equals f of b, I do a little bit of algebra and I end up with a equals b. And this is what I mean by a function being one to one. Okay, what about this one? We have f of x equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. All right, so again, let's go through this whole plugging in a and b thing. Okay, so here you can see I've plugged A into F on the left side, and I've plugged B into F on the right side. Okay, what algebra can we do, guys? Well, for me, on the, the most outside thing I see is this radical, this square root. So I'm going to square both sides. Okay, and that gets rid of the radical, and now I'm looking at this 25, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract 25. All right, that leaves me with a negative a squared equals negative b squared. And like I'm telling you, we, on the right, we can divide by negative 1. We can also say multiply by negative 1. The point is the negatives in front of the a and b do, in fact, cancel. And then I'm going to square root both sides. Okay, so I have plus or minus the square root of a equals plus or minus the square root of b. 
All right, so are they equal? All right, what, 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 what do we do here? Well, by definition, the function f of x is not one-to-one. -one. All right, well, why is it not one-to-one? -one? Okay, well, my plus and minuses don't have to match up, right? So I could be saying the square root of a equals negative square root of b. Well, these are different, different things, different numbers. And I know I'm starting to lose some of you on this whole a and b thing, and, and your, your attention is probably waning. I promise once we get to pictures of these things, it will start to make sense. I'm just showing you an algebraic way to test for one-to-one. -one. But there is certainly an awesome geometric way, which you guys are probably more familiar with. All right, the geometry of one-to-one. -one. All right, graphically, we can now use the horizontal line test to determine if a function is one-to-one. -one. Remember, when we were testing for functions, we had the vertical line test. Now, for one-to-one, -one, we have the horizontal line test. All right, a function that is even, symmetric to the y-axis, is never, ever, ever one-to-one, -one. all right? Why? Well, let's just go back to our basic function y equals x squared. It's a parabola, all right? In your mind, see this parabola, and in your mind, draw a horizontal line. How many times are you touching that parabola or that u? You're touching it twice, right? All right, so let's take the example that I just lost you guys on probably, the square root of 25 minus x squared where some of you are probably still not convinced that it's not one-to-one. -one. And a picture always speaks a thousand words in math. Here I've graphed it for you, all right? It's a half circle with a radius of five. Draw a horizontal line, guys. How many times are we touching this half circle? You guessed it, we're touching it twice. The horizontal line crosses the graph twice, so clearly this function is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so again, what is this horizontal line test by definition? If any horizontal line intersects or touches a graph of a function in no more than one point, then the function is one-to-one. -one. Typically, we say it to ourselves in the converse, which is saying if a horizontal line touches the graph more than once, then the function is not one-to-one. -one. Same thing. All right, so here you can see we have just some arbitrary graph, all right, just a, a blue function that just doesn't mean anything to us. And I draw this red horizontal line, and how many times am I touching? Well, I'm touching my graph three times. And all right, this goes back to our definition of not one-to-one. -one. Notice that x1, x2, and x3 all have the same range value. They all equal y1. All right, so that's what it means that a function is not one-to-one. -one. We've got three x's getting mapped to one y. Thus, we see it in failing the horizontal line test. Okay, uh, let's see here. I got another picture. All right, so here we have this blue descending line. No matter where I draw a red horizontal line, I am touching my blue function only once. All right. And so every horizontal line intersects the graph exactly at one point, thus our blue descending line here is indeed one-to-one. -one. All right, so some tests you can use to determine whether a function is one-to-one. -one. Like the first two examples, you can show, you can, I'll, I, rather than reading this, I'll just say you can plug in A and B into your function, do a little bit of algebra, and see if you get to A equals B. If you do, then the function f is one-to-one, -one. all right? If the function is even, so if we get a uh, y equals x squared, y equals x to the fourth plus x squared, something like that, where we know the function's even, then the function is not one-to-one, -one, all right? Without any work. Once we know it's even, it's not one-to-one. -one. Lastly, if given a graph, we can use the horizontal line test. All right, and I know many of you will, will probably use this more, more than anything uh, because you guys have those graphing calculators. Um, and, you know, I personally think the horizontal line test is, is one of the easiest tests for figuring out uh, if a function is 